What we've seen with this current H5N1 outbreak is that this virus did you know, spill over from wild birds to domestic poultry. What's most different about this current outbreak, it's then spread from uh, poultry into other animals, other mammals. In terms of the United States, the latest concern, and it's been detected in cows, now, so far it's not causing critical illness in cows, but, but it, there's been an outbreak. There's no evidence that there is a viable virus in the food supply. So there's no evidence that pasteurized milk, for instance, has any risk at all. There's no evidence in, in chicken or eggs that, that there's something that can, that can be transmitted to humans. The big concern is that if the virus continued to mutate, could it spread to humans and cause a significant illness and then also be transmissible from human to human? Two things have, have to happen for there to be a significant pandemic. The virus has to acquire the, the ability to efficiently affect humans and they acquire the ability to be efficiently transmitted from human to human. That has not happened yet with these influenza strains since 1918. So currently this, this, uh, this influenza strain has not acquired the ability to easily and efficiently uh, infect humans. The, the couple of human cases I think are kind of rare one-offs. We're certainly more experienced with vaccines for influenza than there ever was for COVID before the COVID pandemic. So. I think if there was an outbreak, you know, the, the, the response can be um, geared up you know, faster than the response to COVID. The general public doesn't need to do anything differently currently. Again, as I said, the people who are professionals in the area, public health professionals, virologists, microbiologists, uh, are and need to monitor, assess, survey, and keep an eye on things.